What's up, Barnhill family, and welcome back to the channel. Yo, yo. So Derek Lewis has the title, and the title belongs to Derek Lewis alone. He is the knockout king officially, yeah. and as he said last night, the only clean person to ever become the knockout king of the UFC. So I think there's certainly something, the added benefit and added bonus, if you will, to Derek being a totally clean athlete, having never tested positive for anything. But it was a great night for him. He got back on track um, after kind of a, a loss that really bothered him here in Houston to Cyril gone. He admitted that he put a lot of pressure on his own shoulders, kind of undue pressure, and wanted to just get in there, relax, have some fun, and do what the knockout king does best, which is knock out his opponent, which is exactly what happened. Yeah, that was a brutal, brutal KO, even for Derek Lewis's standards. And the big tattoo across his chest, knockout king, can officially, you know, be given to him. And that's the title that he'll run with. And I don't really see uh, many people that are currently in the UFC being able to catch up to him because if he's going to continue to fight for a few more years, he's going to continue to knock people out. So he's going to just keep pushing and uh, creating more distance between the rest of the pack. So, you know, super, super impressive. Uh, Chris Dawkins is a tough guy. And yeah. I, you could tell right from the beginning that he was a little bit uh, gun shy and a little bit afraid to engage with Derek because he knew just how powerful Derek's one shot KO was. And it, it, it almost worked against him to land a punch on Derek at which he did early in the fight because Derek realized then and there that this guy's about 30 pounds lighter than me and he can hit me with whatever he wants. I'm not going down and I'm going to walk right through these heavy punches that he's got and go knock him out. And that's exactly what he did. A dangerous uh, I mean, I'm sorry. An angry Derek Lewis is a very, very dangerous Derek Lewis. It certainly is. And I think this was just a, a bit too much too soon for Dawkins. And yeah. he even said as much in the post-fight presser, look, I got caught with some good shots. I got knocked yeah. out. It happens. He's now 4-1 and one in the UFC. All four of his wins have been by knockout. So I think he's a fighter that will continue to rise and continue to build. I don't. He maybe takes a half a step back after this loss, but not even a full step in my opinion because yeah. the knockout king is the number three ranked fighter in the division. And pretty much unless you're a champion – Derek Lewis knocks you out. I mean, yeah. Derek Lewis is one of those guys that he's just always right there in the top two or three, but he just can't ever seem to quite eclipse that and become a champion, either interim or undisputed because of Francis being there, Cyril Gaon being there. It was DC back in the day, and that was just a matchup that was tough for Derek with regards mm -hmm. to the grappling. But I think Chris Dawkins certainly has a bright UFC future ahead of him. His brother's got a fight in February. He said, we're going to go back and focus on that now. But the night certainly belonged to Derek. And I think the thing about Derek is, as you said, an angry Derek Lewis is about the scariest thing on the planet because when he had Dawkins hurt, Dawkins and I got to give him credit, even in that flurry of shots, was able to get somewhat of a clinch position and throw a few short uppercuts and a couple of hooks. And when Derek was reminiscing in his work with Michael Bisping after the fight, he even said, oh, wow, he got me there. Oh, he got me again. Mm -hmm. But nope, I'm going to get him here. Yeah. So Derek actually has a decent chin. He took some, some pretty heavy shots from Dawkins in that clinch position and still found just his absolute kill shot, which we've known Derek to... That, that's what made Derek famous. So... Who knows? He said he wants another title shot. As long as it's a three-rounder, that ain't happening. He's going to have to fight five rounds if he wants a title shot. But it's just going to really be interesting to see what happens with Francis versus Gone and what happens with the return of John Jones because Derek Lewis does have in his back pocket a win over Francis Ngannou. So if at the end of the day, when all this shakes out, if Francis is holding the belt and Derek can get another win in the meantime – it's hard not to make that rematch. Yeah, I don't think Derek is out of the title question whatsoever. No. I think, you know, give him another three-round fight. I'd love to see him in there with Stipe. And since Stipe's kind of been, you know, just chilling and waiting for everything to align itself at the top of the division. And we got John Jones coming. He said he's coming back in the summer. Maybe that's the case. I'm not really sure. Uh, let Derek be, you know, one of the big, the fight right before the main event yeah. on, on a, on a pay-per-view, a big one, maybe don't do it in Houston. He didn't really seem too interested in coming back to Houston and carrying an entire card on his back. So give the man what he wants. He's going to deliver with very entertaining fights and knockouts and things that you love, especially the post fight speeches, the interviews afterwards, everything that he does is gold and can always like go viral for the UFC. And it's really great for promotion. I feel like Derek is maybe the boat, the most, 
one of the most marketable guys to, that the UFC has on the roster and could oh, yeah. be the champion that would just explode. And he might come closer to being a pop culture you know, personality more than anybody else since Conor McGregor. Just because he kind of... Everybody, the working man, every man that's out there kind of relates to Derek Lewis a little yeah. bit, and they love to see it. Um, he says what he means. He's yeah. not politically correct. I mean, you just got to love him for it. Yeah, exactly. I, I really love it, and I, I it, it made me very happy. Uh, somebody who who knows Derek personally to see him in the the spirits that he was in last night after that win. You could tell that he was in there like, man, I, I better not lose to this guy. And I don't think that he doubted that Chris Dawkins could, you know, be a tough competitor. But I, as soon as the fight started, he realized that, you know what, I am one of the greatest fighters on the planet, one of the best heavyweights that's living. And I'm going to go show this guy that four fights in the UFC is not enough to deal with somebody who's fought multiple times for titles. The only people I ever lose to are the champions and the goats of the division. And uh, he proved that Derek Lewis is a very technical fighter. It might not seem like it because he's, he, he likes to move slowly and wait for his shots and he'll wait all night for a shot if he has to. But he is a very technical and cerebral fighter. He thinks a lot before he moves and acts. And that he's athletic. He's way yeah. more athletic than people like to give him credit for. They think he's just a brute that comes in there and knocks people out. He sent a head kick, a jump switch head kick that went over Chris Dawkins' head. Yeah. And Chris Dawkins is not a small guy. And then he hit when they when they went into that clinch position after he had already hurt Dawkins. He hit a couple of tie clinch, beautiful knees. Oh, yeah. And, and then, of course, the finishing combination crumbled. Chris, I mean, his shoulders looked like they touched each other in the front of him yeah. because he just went so limp. I feel like Derek Lewis is, without a doubt, uh, one of the most guaranteed sure things when it comes to finishing his opponents once, once he smells blood or once he realized he landed a big shot on him. Because if he lands one, you're going down in about... 10 seconds. Yeah, uh, no doubt about yeah. that. When Derek smells blood in the water, uh, if there's more than about five seconds left in the round, the chances of his, his opponent going unconscious are approaching 100%. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, and I have to check with Coach Bob Perez on this one, but I believe the statistic is Derek has never lost in Vegas. Oh, cool. You know, and, and Houston, uh, he, he lives here. Yeah. You know, his home is here, his family's here, his friends are here. When he's fighting here, all the talk in the city is about Derek Lewis, mm -hmm. Derek Lewis. Everybody wants to interview him. These bars want to pull him for meet and greets and stuff like that. And you know, the funny thing about Derek is two people that know him personally is you see this great big persona on TV and he's hilarious and he's hilarious in person too, but he's much more reserved and shy. He's kind of just a, a quiet person. He's a very nice, very simple, very humble, very quiet man. And I think that the serial fight, the fact that it was an interim title fight, it was here. He had all the pressure on him. He's being pulled in a hundred different directions. It messed him up. As much as I love to see Derek fight here in Houston and you know do it, you know get a great win for the city, maybe win a title here in the city. I think his best chances of winning are actually away from Houston. It's yeah. on, it's the opposite of a home court advantage for yeah. Derek. He's like the guy that when he travels and he's in a hotel room and he's grinding it out, he, cutting weight because Derek actually does have to cut yeah. a little bit of weight to make two sixty five. You know that all kind of puts a chip on his shoulder, and an yeah. angry Derek Lewis, a Derek Lewis fighting with a chip on his shoulder, is a scary thing to behold. Yeah. And I think styles make matchups, and if he does get the Stipe fight and he beats Stipe, then he's got a. And if Francis beats Cyril, who knows what's going to happen with John? But a win over the greatest heavyweight of all time in Stipe, and a win over the current champion. I don't care what anybody says; it gets you a rematch. I yeah. know it's no, usually a third crack at a title doesn't happen but given those circumstances i think it does and he's beaten pretty much everybody else behind him so yeah. there's no there's nowhere for him to go backwards right we just saw him in there with a guy who was a few spots in the rankings behind him and that did not even go five minutes and right. it was dangerous to have somebody like chris Dawkins in there in hindsight we probably shouldn't have done that but uh you know chris Dawkins, when you get in this sport you got to get thrown into the deep end and he did and he realized very quickly that uh, there are levels to this, even at heavyweight, where it's not just big boys slinging the first one to land, uh, you know, wins. Derek is a high-level fighter, and he deserves those guys. The only people I want to see Derek in there with, uh, Stipe, John Jones, Cyril Gaon, Francis Ngannou, and somebody will emerge. Somebody will come up later in the, uh, you know, in the year or maybe next year. Yeah. And th that'll be welcome into that 
kind of round table. But those guys, there's enough variations of those fights to make that we don't need to see the rest of the, the pack go in there with those guys because I just don't think it's safe for those heavyweights that are not one of those that I just named to be in there with the ones that I did name because those guys are all on a different level. They're operating on a different frequency. And Derek has shown us time and time again that he belongs right up there with him. So while some people might look at him as a, a, a character and maybe just a, a brawler, he actually is a high-level martial artist that does some things that a lot of people have a very difficult time dealing with, and that includes the best wrestlers in the sport, that includes the best strikers in the sport, and everybody has to watch out for that power. That's for sure. And moving into talking about another fighter that is an absolute fan favorite, yeah. unfortunately, the decision did not go his way last night. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson um, was kind of beaten up and uh, had his way with by Bilal Muhammad. Yeah. Uh, you know, Bilal did exactly, I, I can't fault Bilal here. He did exactly what he needed to do to beat Wonderboy Thompson. Yeah. If you engage in a striking sort of kickboxing match with Wonderboy, the chances over 15 minutes of him finding a shot on you are pretty high. Yeah. And Bilal felt that he had a significant grappling advantage and he showed throughout the fight that he did. Uh, he did what he had to do. He got him down. Um, Wonder Boy is a guy that, even though grappling is not his background, he certainly has learned over the years how to be defensive in stopping takedowns and then getting back up if he is to get taken down. And so the fact that Bilal was able to take him down with that ease, I think is something that, although it wasn't the most entertaining fight of all time, something that we should give Bilal credit for. Yeah, and one thing I'll have to say is that mixed martial arts – is exactly that. It's a pu full mixing of the martial arts. There are still specialists in this sport, and specialists tend to go very far. But when you have a guy that can do it all, uh, it, you ha you're dealing with somebody that's very special. And in my opinion, the 170 division has the most uh, well-rounded fighters and the most well-rounded uh, depth yeah. that you can see. Everybody at 170 can do everything really well. And Bilal Muhammad uh, has now beaten arguably the best striker in the welterweight division, yep. maybe in the welterweight division's history, and Wonderboy Thompson Certainly one manhandled him. And he has beaten Damian Maya, the best grappler, ground grappler yeah. that the welterweight division has ever seen. Uh, so to, that to me says that Bilal Muhammad is capable of going – Either way, with, yeah. with the best of the best, no matter what style they bring, no matter what their specialty is, he can take the MMA to them and utilize uh, aspects of both of that. You know, throw some punches to get the takedown. You know, threaten the takedown to land some punches. He's really good at mixing up the martial arts, which is going to set up a lot of success for him in the future. Bilal Muhammad is one of those guys that's going to be a thorn in a lot of people's sides because people didn't realize just how good he was. And... For some reason, the Leon Edwards fight, people look at it as like a loss, but that was really just a weird fluke that, yeah. you know, maybe the worst eye poke we saw in, in many years. And that isn't a blemish on his record whatsoever. No. It's just a, a freak accident. And I think that Bilal Muhammad is well on his way to being a title contender. And if they said that he was fighting for a title in his next outing, I wouldn't bat an eye at it because he's beaten so many people that have... Uh, uh, Wonder Boy Thompson's had two title fights. Damian Maya, I think, has had two multiple, title, yeah. multiple title fights, and he, you know he's competed with Leon Edwards as long as that fight lasted. So I think he is right there with those guys, and uh, maybe one more win, and he'll be right there in title contention. Yeah, people tend to try to avoid specialists in MMA, especially, yeah. especially well-rounded mixed martial arts fighters like Bilal Muhammad. But that's two specialists in a row and two wins in a row. for but More than two wins dominant in a row, but two, two dominant wins back-to-back -back for Bilal Muhammad. Damian Maya, as you said, probably the best jiu-jitsu guy, certainly the best in, in the 170 division, maybe one of the best ever to, to right. grace the octagon. And Bilal Muhammad's great game plan was beautiful. Stop the takedown, beat him up on the feet exactly inverted game plan against wonder boy thompson mm -hmm. stop the the damage on the feet and get the takedown as right. soon as you can so the the depth of skill that he has is quite impressive and i think that he's calling out two people right now one is colby covington the other is hamza chemaev 
I mean, when you're calling both of those guys out, you're certainly not afraid to fight anybody. Yeah. And I think that Bilal Muhammad likely will get one of those two fights. We know that there's some banter going on between Colby and Chemayev separately, but I think Bilal matched up against either one of those two guys next. Mm -hmm. Colby would be for the ranking because yeah. Colby's ahead of him in the rankings. Chemayev would be for the name recognition because Bilal's still working on his name recognition. Both of those are extremely tough fights. Yeah. I don't know that I would pick Bilal to win either one of those those but the fact that he's calling both of those names out i gotta respect that i absolutely and i'm not 100 percent sold on the uh hamza chamaya versus colby covington which makes me believe that Bala muhammad has a really good chance of getting a fight with the the hottest prospect in the sport in hamza chamaya yeah. the only reason i say that i don't really see that fight happening materializing right now and in the early parts of next year between colby and, and hamza that is is because Dana White said he, even though Hamzat is on a seriously fast track to the title, we're not going to give him Kamaru Usman next. We right. want to see him fight about three more times. We want to continue to build him because the rise with the fighters is the most fun, most exciting part about a fighter's career. And what's the point to just blast him right up there with the best when we can see him make gradual improvements and, uh, and you know, quickly, but, you know, at a reasonable pace, make his way up the rankings. So I think Bilal Muhammad is somebody that might be on the, the Hamzat Jemayev radar now, and you might see that fight happen sooner than later. Um, the only reason I don't really see Colby Covington getting that fight next is because Dana said three or four more fights until then. And if Colby's the number one fighter in the world that's not you know, the champion, wh what are the other three fights that they're going to give Hamzat between yeah. him and Kamaru Usman. If he beats Colby Covington, there's no three people between Col Colby and Kamaru that he could go fight, and then he'd have to go backwards in the rankings, and right, that's right. not really what we want to see. So I think he's going to make these little jumps forward, and that's why I feel like Bilal Muhammad might be getting the Hamzat call very soon. He might be, and anybody that beats Colby Covington, immediate title shot, no sure. questions asked. Yep. If, you beat, if you beat Chaos, you're getting a title shot. Right. I mean, he, he has gone the distance with Kamaru. Well, Almost went the distance yeah. the first round, first time, went the distance the second time. He is as razor thin skill wise. Is he's just it's like one A and one B mm -hmm. with him and Kamaru Usman. So anybody that beats Colby certainly has a chance to beat Kamaru. So yeah. you know you can't if you, if you do give him Hamzat right away and Hamzat beats him, then you have no other choice. You got to right. throw Hamzat in there with Usman at that point. So if Dana is planning on bringing him up a little bit slower, we might see that Bilal fight next, and yeah. that would be very interesting because Bilal has shown us that. He's not afraid of a specialist, and he's he's taken out a high-level striking specialist. He's taken out a high-level jiu-jitsu specialist. Now let's see what he can do with a high-level wrestler if he fights Chimaev. Yeah, I'd love to see that. And one other thing I, I don't think uh, we mentioned, but this fight, you know, the UFC, the matchmaking is always so, so great. Oh, yeah. And this was the last fight of the year, the last fight card of the year. And out of the 13 fights on the card or whatever it was, there was like 11 knockouts. Yeah. Or 11 finishes. Third I'm most sorry. in UFC history. Third most in UFC history. So when they say they're going out with a bang, they're ending the year with a bang, they truly mean it. And none other was more heard than the uh, the Derek Lewis knockout. First round K over Chris Dawkins. So I think the UFC knows exactly what they're doing when they're making these matches. Oh, that's for sure. When you want to end the year with a bang... The person who walks out last in the red corner mm -hmm. of the entire calendar year is none other than Derek the Black Beast Lewis. You call on the knockout yep. king to send the year off with a bang. Yeah, he said he went H-Town on, on his ass. He so did. That, that, that is, was awesome, man. That, that was swanging and banging. Absolutely. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Drop us a comment. Let us know what you thought about Derek Lewis becoming the official knockout king of the UFC. And let us know what you thought about Bala Muhammad's performance over Wonderboy Thompson. If you haven't smashed that like button already, we much appreciate it and guys we will see you in the next one peace